another TV plug and play games. Actually, another freebie. This is, um, well, another uh, toy that uh, somebody was throwing out uh, at our uh, recycling drop off. And uh, yeah, once again, I took it. This is uh, another TV plug and play. Obviously, as you can see here, this one's based on Intellivision games. This one here's got 25 Intellivision games built in. Now, I've seen these things at my local thrift stores probably about a hundred times, and I've always passed it up. It looks very, very cheap. Um, I mean, first of all, it looks like one of those old Barracuda PlayStation controllers, or even more so like a, an Xbox controller. And I've always wondered, like, why would, you know, someone build something with Intellivision games um, and not make it look retro? You know, this just doesn't look right. I mean, why does it have an analog stick, I thought. And, uh, you know, I figured it was so cheap that this probably didn't even work. <laughs> it's probably just fake. And, uh, you know, once again, it's one of those things that um, there's probably other games out there on the market, not in television games, that... Uh, you know, TV plug and plays that got thrown out on the market that use the exact same controller. And in this case, it just so happens to have in television games uh, built in. But um, I can't find out a lot of information on this. From what I can tell, it came out around 2005, 2006, the same time we saw a lot of those plug and plays, the uh, Jack's Pacific Atari I showed last week. And uh, actually, just like the Atari, and a lot of those Jack specific plug and plays, as I've mentioned before, this one's based on Nintendo on a chip. So it's not really genuine in television games, it's not genuine in television ROMs. They're basically reprogrammed games um, to run on Nintendo emulation. So, you know, they're written in Nintendo code, if you will. Um, and they're just made to look like the original in television games. Um, so yeah, this one, like I said, it's got 25 games built in. Uh, runs off four AA batteries, as you can see. Uh, unfortunately, this one's missing the battery cover. Like I said, I got this for free. It was uh, something that someone was throwing out uh, to be recycled, so I took it. I couldn't find the battery pack for it, or the cover for it. Um, it was in a huge bag uh, with a lot of stuff that the guy was throwing out uh, to be recycled. And uh, Yeah, I couldn't find the cover. Um, but I took it anyways because I figured we'll take a look at it and uh, yeah I mean and we can see the power on switch on the bottom got a select and a start button here like I said we've got both a d-pad and a joystick and we'll find out if that works once we get it going uh, we've got a B X and Y once again that doesn't relate to an in television in any specific way and a reset button, usually typical on these to bring you back to the menu of games. This one, like the uh, Atari one, and I mentioned on the Atari one, has a very long cable on it. So you can easily get to your TV and, jeez, I don't know, that's 12 feet or something of cable. So nice long cable on it, uh, mono composite AV cable. Uh, so let's plug it in the TV and put some batteries in it and check it out. Alright, so we got four AA batteries in there. Let's uh, turn it on. And uh, let's check it out, shall we? Alright, so this brings us to the main menu. Uh, like I mentioned, there's 25 games built in here. So let's uh, take a quick look through the, uh, through the games list. I love how even they've emulated the, uh, I always assume that was the BIOS screen in the Intellivision, because most Intellivision games, when you boot them up, look like that. Now, I'm not too familiar with most Intellivision games, so a lot of these, uh, I'm going to have no idea what I'm doing. And, uh, you know, a lot of Intellivision games are, considering how simplistic they are, you know, some of them do take some getting used to before you can actually figure out what the heck you're supposed to do. 
I guess you'd say they're surprisingly complex for how simple they really are. Um, it helps on here because, of course, you don't have the number pad, which always confused me, like, you know, to start player one and start player two, and sometimes you had to use the number pad to pick options, and other times you didn't. Uh, so, yeah, hitting reset brings you back to the main menu. As you can see, when you come back to the main menu, the colors, the background colors have changed, so there's multiple background colors. Well, skiing, I guess we'll try. Skiing game here is actually pretty neat. And, I mean, in a lot of these games, you know, we took things for granted here just like scrolling. I mean, um, you know, the, the Intellivision obviously was a lot more advanced than 2600. And scrolling like this is something that you rarely ever got on a 2600 game, so... You know, as simplistic as these are, uh, you have to remember the Intellivision for its time was actually a pretty powerful machine. Now, Hover Force is another game that, uh, oh, cool title screen, though. Got to admit, it's got a tool, cool title screen, and it's not like all those other games I've seen on the Intellivision, which maybe that wasn't so much a part of the Intellivision as it was a part of the games. Uh, but a lot of animation here, a lot of uh, intro animation once again showing that the Intellivision was a little more complex in in the scrolling here smooth scrolling on a huge world um, <laughs> huge world I know it sounds hilarious now but geez I mean for the time it was d definitely way beyond anything that the 2600 could have pulled off but really doesn't matter right now because I have no idea what I'm doing supposed to shoot these things I guess but I just am having one heck of a time trying to shoot them my crosshairs aren't really lining up with where my shots are going once again is that the way the game is supposed to be or is something not right here I don't know honestly let's just try another game <laughs> alright space armada here's something that's I'm familiar with is it's it's you know obviously just a space invaders clone uh, on the Intellivision of course, a lot of games back then were clones of other games, and uh, I mean, yeah, it's it's not a bad game, and uh, pretty simple to figure out how to play. So there you go. And here's Pinball. Let's check out Pinball on the Intellivision. Another Intellivision game I've never played. And, uh, I mean, so far it looks pretty good, actually. I remember Pinball on the on the 2600, and once again, this definitely blows it away in terms of the colors and multiple, uh, you know, screens and stuff. But um, the way the ball moves is almost funny, because it almost stops for a second when it hits uh, an object. It just kind of looks funny, like it's magnetic or something. Not the most realistic uh, physics. Uh, there in the movement of the ball, but hey, not a bad game. All right, so here's wrestling. Once again, another game. I've got no idea what I'm doing. Picking a character, apparently Rambo. <laughs> and we can pick our moves, which I thought was kind of cool. Wow, and that was unexpected. You didn't get that on the 2600. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I have no idea what I'm doing in this game. If I got some hits in, it was um, random luck. Just basically button mashing on that one. And hockey. Surprisingly, not a bad game. Now, once again, I had a, a hockey game on the 2600, but it was one-on-one. -on -one. You know what I mean? It was one sprite and a goalie versus another player and a goalie. And here we have three players plus two goalies, or six players plus two goalies all on the screen at once. I mean, it probably was pretty advanced for its time. And I know I've been saying that a million times, but as most of you know, that was sort of the way it uh, sort of went with the Intellivision. It almost was um, the next generation. You could almost consider it, I mean, most people consider it the same generation as the 2600. But when you look at all the Atari 2600 games and what they could do, um, you know, all the limitations they had in one button on the controller, and then you went to the 5200, the Intellivision, and the ColecoVision, it really is next-gen. 
it really is a, a different generation. Thunder Castle, uh, another game that looks interesting, but once again, I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. I couldn't even attack. I mean, the buttons didn't seem to attack. I basically just realized you could walk around and collect items. I'm sure eventually you learn how to attack, but uh, yeah. Once again, game probably is pretty cool, but I have no idea what I'm doing. And one last game we'll take a look at, Motocross, which um, once I figured out how to get moving, it actually seemed all right. And oh yeah, by the way, I forgot to mention, the um, joystick does work. Obviously it's not an analog stick, um, but the joystick does work. You can use the D-pad or the joystick to play the game. So, I mean, overall, not bad. It's kind of sad that they released this in such a generic controller instead of making it look retro or making it look in television specific like how Jack specific did with the Pong controllers they had an Atari 2600 joystick and then they had the um you know the uh the flashback looking like um uh looking like a 7800 uh, and the flashback too looking like a, a mini 2600 woody I mean, a lot of these retro games, they made the controller itself, or a lot of these retro plug-and-plays, they made the system look retro itself and made it look like the system it was trying to emulate. Would have been cool if they made, like, a little mini Intellivision or made it look like an Intellivision controller instead of packing it into this obviously universal controller that's you know, wasn't really designed for Intellivision. But, I mean, other than that, all the games seem to be okay. Like I said, I'm not familiar with them, so it's really hard to say uh, how accurate they are to the real and television uh, games. But uh, considering it's Nintendo on a chip, I'm sure they're close enough. And I don't know if I can really recommend this one. I mean, it's only saving grace is that it has 25 games built into it, which is a lot more than you get in most plug-and-plays. Granted, most people don't like plug-and-plays. And like I said, I picked it up for free. So, I mean, I guess you can't really go wrong with that. It was fun to check out. And uh, see you guys later.